Cooper with Joe Theismann. Joe, it's going to be a special weekend this week in the NFL. Best weekend of the year, probably championship weekend. I, I think we can safely say the four best teams still in uh, this year. What are your predictions? Well, you're right. There's no Cinderella. Uh, you know, if, I guess maybe uh, a couple of other teams by the goddamn people would have said that they were so much Cinderellas. These are the four best teams in football. I love the fact that you have two older quarterbacks in their 40s going up against really what is the future of the NFL and the young guys and Jared and, and Patrick. So it's going to be exciting. I think weather's going to have a factor uh, as far as the New England game goes. And, um, you know, the Saints are tough to beat at home. But if there's anybody that I think can get them, it's the Rams. It's going to boil down, I think, to defenses. We all, we all love to talk about offense. We all love to watch the ball in the air. Truthfully, I think whichever defense steps up in, in either of these games is going to make the difference. Do you think we see the passing of the torch in the way that offense begins to get running coaching? Obviously, Belichick is going to be coaching in the AFC, and then you have Sean McVay in the NFC. You know, I mean, kind of the polar opposite uh, of guys. Is, are we going to see something different if the Pats end up going out to Kansas City and the Rams come through and we see how explosive that he is you know, ide ideologically? Well, I think you know, people tend to pit quarterbacks against quarterbacks when really the quarterbacks play the other team's defense. Uh, people tend to put head coaches against head coaches when it's really the offensive coordinators. <laughs> so in, in the case of the Rams, it's Sean McVay. He calls the plays. In the case of the New England Patriots, it's Josh McDaniels because he calls the plays. So, you know, you, you'd, go, you'd look at the way they approach the game head-to-head. -head. The New England Patriots have proven they will do whatever they need to do. If you have a strength, they're not going to buck their heads against it. They're just going to go someplace else. I think the Rams, I think uh, Sean is so excited. I spent a lot of time with him in Washington. We spent hours together in meetings. I've, I've learned what he's like. I've learned his philosophy. I've learned uh, the type of coach he is, which is really great. But the big thing about it is he's going to be aggressive. The, you know, you've got Sean Payton and then you've got Sean McVay, two guys I call them ruthless. I mean, there's going to be, there's going to be trick plays. There's going to be exciting football. An onside kick there's, in the second half of a Super Bowl. You name it. I mean, it, it's, you know, go, oh, fake, fake punts. Yeah. Could be fake field goals. Just prepare yourself for anything in this particular game, which is exciting. And when you talk about the Kansas City-New England game, I think temperature is going to be a big factor. I've, I've played in zero degrees, and it's no fun. It's hard to hold the football. Um, the premium will be on holding on to the football. What does the future hold for Washington? Uh, Alex Smith suffers a horrific injury, one that, unfortunately, you know better than a lot of people. Um, what does the future hold for that franchise and also for that quarterback? Well, I think the, the future of the franchise is somewhat in question. Right now, the quarterback situation is fairly stable. Colt McCoy will probably be the starter going into the OTAs, mini camps, and probably the season. Josh uh, Johnson, I think, proved that he's a worthy backup. I think they're going to have to go get someone. We've got some people that need to be signed. Preston Smith is a free agent. Jameson Crowder is a free agent. Um, they've got to figure out a way to keep the offensive line healthy. We have not been able to play with guys up front for two years. And it's, it's a result, as the season goes on, the results show it. You, know, you just aren't able to run the ball as well. You aren't able to protect as well. Heck, we had six guards on IR this year. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's, I mean, it's absurd, not that there's anyone to blame, but it's just a crazy number to have that many in one position on IR. Last I'll ask you, if you were a GM, do you hold any reservations with Kyler Murray? Obviously, we know what's happening with the Oakland A's signing him. They give him the, uh, the freedom to play with Oklahoma one more year. All of a sudden, he wins the Heisman Trophy, declares for the NFL draft while still already having a contract with the A's. Now Major League Baseball has given the A's permission to, to extend him more money than normal, almost a Major League-style contract to try and keep him in Major League Baseball. Would you have reservations signing a guy like Kyler Murray? First of all, I love what Kyler Murray did declaring for the draft. <laughs> it's, it, it, they gave him a certain amount of money. He said, I'm going to go play football. They're going to give him more money. They want him to play baseball. I think he would be better suited to play baseball than to play in the NFL. You're really going to have to shape and tailor your offense to one particular individual. We saw it in Baltimore with Lamar Jackson, you know, the way they ran the football. But you can't just have the quarterback run the football. It's going to be a short career. You get beat up. You get beat into a pulp. Now you get through it one year, two year, maybe three, but... A la RG3? Well, Robert, you know, Robert got hurt early. I mean, Carson Wentz, two years, you know, a knee and a back. The more you run around, the more susceptible you are to injury. I, don't, I think Kyle Murray's too small to play in the NFL. I love his athletic ability. I love the way he throws the football. 
but I think it would be a challenge. And you give coaches a year to study him. Maybe he comes out the rook his rookie year and runs around and everybody goes, ooh, look at this. You give defensive coaches at our league and our level a chance to study someone, they'll figure out what he can't do well. And then I just don't know if he has the ability to be able to see around people or through people or get himself in position to be able to do things. Um, if, you're, if you're looking at third and ten with him and you keep him in a pocket, where's he going to go? You know, I rush four guys, tell them stop, you know, two, three, stop two yards away from him and put your hands up. Just don't let him out of the pocket. Put your hands up. It's going to be a challenge. Thanks, Joe. Too bad. I appreciate it. Thank you.